I reserve most of my thanks, in fact, almost all of my thanks to the corporate news media, because without them, I wouldn't have a career. Uh, and every time I think it's easing up just a little bit, and I can go back and start watching football games and enjoying my children, or get a dog or do something like that, along come the corporate news media with yet another extraordinary example of why we desperately need to change the media system in this country if we're gonna change this country's politics. I wish, for example, I had a dollar for every time a news story about John McCain in the first paragraph includes the comment that he is a former POW who's a maverick and a reformer. Just stated as a matter of fact. I wish I had a dollar. And I wish I could use all that money to run for the U.S. Senate because I'd have enough to win. And I wish my opponent, their campaign chest would be filled with someone who had a dollar for every time the news media started every story about Barack Obama by saying he would deliver change you can believe in and came from a heroic background, uh, that my opponent would be broke and I'd be a millionaire. Our news simply presents McCain uncritically as this maverick war hero with no sense of irony that this war hero claims he'd never use his war credentials as a candidate, yet that seems to be the only thing he's running on at this point. During this last week, we've uh, seen a new superhero in America, Wonder Woman Jr. <laughs> Sarah Palin flew down from the North Slopes, uh, dropped in long enough to hurl one of the most bitter, lie-filled speeches I've ever seen in my life. And then the McCain campaign, which has taken over her thinking process, which I suspect wasn't a great deal of struggle, <laughs> has announced that she will not be able to meet with the press until after Election Day, uh, because the, she's made, she's be doing fundraising events and has other things on her schedule, so there will be no chance for interviews with her to question her on all the things John McCain didn't study before he picked her uh, the day before she was announced as the vice, his vice presidential candidate. What I would give to have one credible journalist, like a BBC journalist, have 60 minutes with Sarah Palin to question her on her past, on her career, make her answer for what she's done as a public official, make her answer for her positions on the environment, on science, on government service, but that won't happen. It's very, we won't even get an American journalist unless it's someone from Fox News uh, offering some hagiographical, <laughs> that's not journalism. You're darn right that's not journalism. Uh, but you know, there's something worse happened last week that's gotten no mention in the mainstream media at all, and I think it's the strongest criticism of our press system and the problems we face today. Last week in St. Paul during the Republican convention, this past week, many journalists were arrested for covering the protest outside the convention hall. What was especially appalling about this was not only were working journalists and journalists arrested for no reason except for being journalists, uh, the mainstream news media didn't cover this at all. It was simply not a news story. And it said to me that we have now degenerated so much in our journalism in the United States under the corporate media that we have a journalism that is comfortable with being in a police state. We have a journalism that thinks now when the government says you shouldn't go over there, yes, we won't go over there. We're, and if someone does, they're wrong. We'll assume the government's right. Uh, this is a very dangerous position we're in. This is extraordinarily unacceptable. I'm very, very proud of the fact that the group I helped start with John Nichols and Josh Silver, Free Press, so I hope you're all members, has led the campaign to see that all charges are dropped against these journalists and to see that this never happens again in our country.